fighting the TPP 10 years ago, George Norrie was. You see, we have to understand that and appreciate it and not take this show or his show or other shows for granted. Does that mean I'm perfect? Does it mean George is perfect? No. But we want to live in a free country. We're for common sense. I, th I think we can say we're populist, constitutional populist. Now, I've been ranting, George. I know you were coming on about world events and all the bizarre earth changes, the ring of fire, what's happening with the economy, uh, much of Africa collapsing into Europe, uh, ISIS making all these gains. I mean, there's so many things going on. TPP getting shot down so far last Friday, huge victory. George, there's so many angles to go. Where would you like to go first in this palette uh, I've thrown out, or do you want to throw a curveball at us? No, no curveball to you, Alex. I'll do that a little bit later, but one, thanks for having me on. Two, the best move I ever made was putting you on our show because I got three million more listeners that way. Pretty smart, huh? It certainly is, my friend, but you know you took risk doing that. I did. I did. I, I put my head in the news. You know, I have a, a conservative network, and but they let me run with this show. And I said, I want this guy. He's different. He's patriotic. And let's do it. You know, yesterday was Flag Day. I was on the air. I do uh, the first or second Sunday of every month. And I played the old James Cagney, it's a grand old flag to end the show. And, and I've got to tell you, it brought chills up and down my spine, because that's what America's all about. It's about doing something for people and, you know, not manipulative groups and building corporations. It's for helping people. And so many of our politicians have forgotten that. I was just listening to these clips you were playing of Hillary Clinton. And, you know, unbelievable how these people will just position themselves for power. It's, it's, uh, it's disgusting. We're not going to do that. You know, we're going to be the watchdogs of everything. We went after TPP last week, and I think we helped contribute to its defeat. Let's hope it stays defeated. It's supposed to come up for another vote this week. Um, our next move is to insulate the power grid so that we're, we're not up a creek if somebody launches a nuke in the atmosphere or the sun hits us with some kind of solar flare. And I'm not going to stop, Alex, and you're not going to stop either. That's right. You've launched with a bunch of former military generals and others a national initiative. It's only a few billion dollars, what, two to five, depending on which number, to harden things. We get hit by one of these EMPs or a sun, I guess a Carrington event. You're the expert, uh, but I've had scientists on. It will blow the electrical grid and put us back in the Stone Age. And they know that, and they know we've been hit before. Uh, we were an industrialized society, and metal lining buildings, you name it, basically caught on fire. Describe that threat for people that aren't aware of it. Oh, it, it is unbelievable. They're predicting 90% of the Americans will die within the first year if the power grid goes out in total. This is not scary talk. This is real. This is, this is a possibility that a rogue nation or any nation that has a nuke has the capability of detonating it in our atmosphere. It creates gamma waves, and it literally fries the electrical grid, and we have no power. The sun can do the same thing if it's got a big enough X flare that it emits, uh, and we're not protected. Um, now, some states are starting to protect their own grid, so they may be self-contained. Texas is thinking about it. But in terms of the country in whole, we haven't done anything yet. We've got some great people out there, but Peter Pry, for example, has been trying to get legislators convinced, let's just do it. Um, there, there's a uh, representative out of Michigan, Fred Upton, who has been stymieing the S.H.I.E.L.D. bill. He's been holding back. Maybe the lobby of the electrical companies, uh, you know, it, it have gotten to him. Uh, so I, I turned my audience loose, and they just flooded his his. Uh, his phone line in Washington, D.C. and in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, we got to get these legislators to simply say, we care about America. We care about people. This is ludicrous. Fix this thing. Well, let me back up what you're saying there. I mean, I've had so many mainline scientists on, but as you know, the, the audience may not have just tuned in. They've had congressional hearings the last few years where the Pentagon admits, and that's where that 90% number comes from, 
that if we have a Carrington event like we had in the 1850s, we'll put that back on screen for TV viewers, that it will heat up the power lines and other systems and blow them as happened to telegraph wires across the U.S. in 1859 and other parts of the world. So a partial Carrington event, X-Flare, would blow out incredible amounts of stuff and cause amazing devastation. But a full one, we're talking Stone Age level behavior. Now, I understand folks like to say North Korea or ISIS could do it or something. And I get that if you detonated a, 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 a bomb or hydrogen bomb in the atmosphere right, that it can blow out electricals, and, and, and that happened during nuclear testing. But I don't see that, George, as the big threat. I see it as the sun, because according to the physicists and astrophysicists we've had on, they believe we're overdue for another one of these Carrington events. Oh, we, we are overdue. We lucked out a few years ago when a huge X-flare went out at the side of the sun. It wasn't facing us directly. Had it hit us directly, we would have had some severe problems. We lucked out there. This could happen at any day. Any time the sun emits a huge solar flare, it could hit us. Carrington, they were lucky. They just had the telegraph system. If that same flare hit us today, Alex, you wouldn't be on the air. I wouldn't be on the air. You couldn't get to your ATMs. Gasoline stations wouldn't be able to pump. Water stations couldn't pump water to your house. It's over. That's right. I remember a few times in the 80s and then in the 90s when I was younger, this was in the 70s and 80s, and I remember my dad talking about it, and like AM radio wouldn't come in, FM barely wouldn't. They said satellites failed, uh, gas pumps, uh, they couldn't take credit cards inside. I remember those, uh, those events. Imagine now if we get hit. I know it. It could be just devastating, and we're going to prepare ourselves. We're going to keep going and keep pushing and devoting incredibly valuable airtime to get this done. To me personally, it's the biggest issue I have ever faced. Beyond anything else that's been going on under the table, sure. we've got to get this thing fixed. Something just clicked. You know, the globalists that have hijacked our country use America to dominate the planet to a great extent, have us pay for it at, at our expense. If they really wanted to dominate the world, they would harden the UK, the US, and a few other countries they control and then when one of these things inevitably hits, we'd be the only country standing. Why on earth would they not spend the couple billion dollars to harden the power centers themselves? Explain what would be done to harden it. Well, technically, we've got the engineering to do it. Uh, the estimate is about $2 billion to fix the power grid, make sure that things are Faraday caged, that uh, transmitters are taken care of, uh, that... Uh, that everything we've got is fixed, insulated, and that's all doable. Our engineering is excellent. $2 billion is no money compared with what they spent just during the bailouts in 2008. I mean, let's, let's do it. I would as a taxpayer. Isn't it basically just, a, from the engineers I've had on, a surge protector at the power plants and at the power relay centers in between the lines and the final equipment so if it hits, you don't blow up all the equipment and so it doesn't cause a chain reaction? That's most of it. That's most of it. But you'd still have to do it in individual states. But it's easy to do. It's, it's the, the technology's there. The manpower's there. And my God, one day it's going to happen. And the nation that has not protected itself is literally toast. It will look like the Pentagon predicts, and I agree with them, like The Road. Viggo Mortensen's a listener. He's been on. But have you ever seen The Road? Came out about eight years ago? Yes, I did. And But this is going to be worse than Mad Max. Well, I mean, they believe in a collapse of society, even a total economic collapse. Within 15 days, most people become cannibals. And, and most people don't even know how to wipe their noses now. They're not self-sufficient. It's a very entitled society, living off a bunch of hardworking people. Uh, can you imagine all these entitled, spoiled brats during a collapse, George? Oh, unbelievable. There was an old Twilight Zone show called The Shelter, Alex, where this guy had a fallout shelter, and that uh, was very prevalent in the 1960s. Well, his neighbors all knew he had a shelter. They knew that he had water put away and food put away, and he was ready in case the Soviet Union at the time launched. Well, guess what? A alarm went off that a nuke had been detonated, and everybody 
was trying to break down his fallout shelter while he and his family were in it to get to him. They all wanted in. And that's what's going to happen here. People are going to go ballistic. The haves and the have-nots are going to go at it with each other. It's going to be, it's going to be unbelievable. A I'm, nightmare beyond biblical proportions. You're absolutely right. I mean, government itself is digging in. Elites are running to, to New Zealand. All the billionaires have left Israel. Uh, you know, we saw this coming way back. That things are unsustainable. And you add to all of that that they're blocking new technologies and things. Uh, now more than ever, people need to get prepared because I can feel it in my bones. Oh, this is the question I wanted to ask you on why I wanted to get you on a few weeks ago. Everybody, and when I say everybody, I mean everybody I talk to, but separate people at restaurants and at, at hotels, I'll hear them talking going, yeah, everybody think, feels like something bad's coming. I can feel it. And intellectually, we can then see the reasons for that. But is it war with Russia? Is it economic collapse? Uh, is it that people are awakening and we feel kind of that group consciousness of concern? Uh, or do you disagree? You don't think something big is coming? What's your take? Oh, I've been saying for a couple of years now, Alex, that something big is happening and that people have been acting strange, weird. You've seen it. You just talked about it. And they sense something. There's something out there in the cosmos, this wireless Internet that we're all connected to that is telling us something big is about to happen. I had a story about a rabbi on last night who, in Israel, who was in Haifa, Israel. He went into the cave, which apparently was the cave of the prophet Elijah. And he claims that he came out and was told by the prophet that Israel will sustain soon a huge war and that many would die. I mean, these are frightening prophecies. We're not making this stuff up. These, these are people who are legitimate in what they do. Everybody's talking about something that's going to happen. I mean, the United States moving military equipment to Europe. I mean, this is shades of the Cuban Missile Crisis all over again. Do you think Putin's going to allow that? Well, Probably George, not. George, uh, you know, the older you get, the more you learn to follow your gut. And it, my gut's never wrong. And I've never, never had my gut this concerned. I mean, my spider sense is redlining every day now. It's just getting so intense. Uh, and everybody else I talk to says the same thing. What, what, what do you think it is? I mean, I'm getting chills right now. Honestly, yes, I think we're on the brink of a third world war, a war that nukes may be used uh, that <sighs> will change the face of this planet for the rest of our lives. If we do have the rest of our lives, I mean, I've got six grandchildren, Alex. I adore them. I want them to have a future. Um, I, I still think there's a piece of me that because of all of us and the way we think we can get through this. But. Some of these leaders just don't seem to get it. I mean, they just don't seem to get it. Um, if you ever go to Vegas, I mean, you see people of all walks of life. You see people from Africa, China, uh, the rest of Asia. You see Russians. You see Americans. You see people from Mexico. People are all, they're all out there having fun. You sit down, you play a little blackjack next to somebody from two different countries. They don't want war. They don't want you dead. Yet, there's something else afoot here that I just don't get. I, you know, ISIS, for example. These people are driving with new trucks, new Humvees, waving their black flags. Why isn't anybody taking them out? They're right out there. It doesn't make any sense. Generals during World War II would have had that thing destroyed by now. Today... There's a different thing. There's something else going on here. I can't put my finger on it yet. Well, it's a global destabilization, and criminal elements in Western governments have been funding radical jihadis to, 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 to destabilize. And then you tie in now Africa collapsing after Hillary's invasion of Libya, which she bragged she came, she saw he died. And now thousands a day are streaming across into Europe. They're now getting to the channel, and the British government is allowing them to basically hijack trucks and drive through into England. Uh, I mean, this is getting insane. It's like an evil force wants to collapse the world, George. Oh, there's, there's no doubt about it. Look, Saddam Hussein, not a Boy Scout, kept things in check. 
Muammar Gaddafi in Libya, not a boy 